If you're new in town or just new to this whole podcast thing, you're tuning in to Law by Night, the podcast that discusses all things vampiric with no fear of preaching a masquerade. In this episode, we shall discuss consent in gaming, why it is needed, and why so many people who have taken offence at the concept have totally misunderstood it. Sometime during the middle of September 2019, I was just getting into the tabletop RPG Vampire the Masquerade, and I was trying to learn as much as I could. During my internet travels, I was made aware of a PDF document that was circulating online on social media and certain RPG forums. It was an RPG consent checklist that had a few pages for players and game masters to decide what is and isn't okay for them in their games, with different colours used as an indicator to how they can cope with things like violence, rats, self-harm, extreme weather and other examples. Green meant it was a safe topic to explore, yellow meant it was okay if it happens off stage or it may require discussion should it appear centre stage, and red meant that such an item is not to be included in the session. The checklist also addresses things like social and cultural issues, sex and romance, and how to best handle those aspects around players. Now when I saw this, I believed this sort of thing would be a very good idea to have in place for some players. However, many individuals on Facebook pages and forums did not like this idea at all. In fact, many were borderline offended and just outright angry about the idea. It's the world of darkness, they protested. Fucked up shit is supposed to happen to your character, they'd insist. And whilst this is true, I'm of the mindset to believe that many of these people who are offended by the idea of these so-called millennial snowflakes coming in ruining their tabletop games with colourful checklists have not fully understood what the concept sheet is for, especially a select few within the Vampire the Masquerade community, usually abbreviated as The Family. Coincidentally, Vampire the Masquerade makes a wonderful example for explaining the true purpose of these consent sheets. Vampire the Masquerade is a tabletop RPG game where groups of players assume the role of one of many vampire clans, which are similar to classes in D&D in principle, but very different in practice and roleplay. Each clan can be seen as a different breed of vampire that belongs to a large family or other vampires of their clan. An individual is chosen for the embrace for a specific reason. It is very rare for a human to be embraced willy-nilly, and it is rarer still for a human to grant consent to become a vampire and have their mortal lives ruined forevermore. Depending on the game you are playing and the sort of character you have made, you will belong to one of three factions, all of which are in this murky grey area of morality. Should your character announce they wish to jump ship for whatever reason, you are as good as dead, presuming that your sire or the lead of whatever faction you and your party has been a part of hasn't forced you in some way or another to stay put. And I'm not talking about having a firm telling off like your parents would have done for mixing with the wrong crowd at school. Vampires in this game have a whole host of powers called disciplines that have various effects and cool abilities that make you look like a badass and a creepy motherfucker. I will focus on the two most obvious non-consenting disciplines. First you have Dominate, which does exactly what it says on the tin. You can force individuals to do what you please and erase large portions of their memories and even replace them with entirely new ones. Once more, the description of the ability states that the individual under the influence of Dominate does not feel they are being forced against their will, but they feel like they want to listen to the one who is telling you to jump off that cliff. The other discipline is Presence, which isn't so obvious as Dominate as a non-consenting power, but it is still one all the same. The user emits an energy that can make you the centre of attention, make conversations and persuasions easier for you. You can also use this energy to make people fear you, make an intimidation an easier process. Whilst it is not as obvious as Dominate, Presence still has this effect of forcing the individual to feel a certain way around you. More powerful levels of Presence are very creepy and powerful, as you can use it to coerce people to feel that they love you and summon them to do your bidding. Now I don't know about you, but that just has crazy bitch girlfriend or or boyfriend written all over it. Crass remarks aside, there is one more thing that you should know about how you can control other vampires. If you get them to drink your vampiric blood, they are blood bound to you, effectively making you their slaves. Now in a couple of minutes, what was once sounding like an interesting game about you exploring settings as a vampire has become a very dark and morbid game, a world of darkness, if you would. 
Now who wants to be forced to kill themselves, fall in love with the blood-sucking dictators, or to recreate the joys of being abused vampiric slaves? Who would want to play with a storyteller or games or dungeon master who would force their players under their will? In fact, why would anyone want to be told how to play their games? No one in real life likes being bossed around, no one likes to be forced upon, so how have players of Vampire the Masquerade for over 20 years have played this game without the need of a consent sheet to make the game practically unplayable and driving the developers into the fiery pits of hell? The answer to that is really simple. That is not the purpose of consent sheets, you dopey twats. Behind each tabletop session are characters. Behind them are the players, who are actual human beings with thoughts, emotions and their own physical and emotional journeys that have led them to this fateful night of sitting round a table or in front of their webcam, playing games with other people. A lot of the time, you won't know every single aspect of their life or their past experiences. Happy Larry over there who never fails to crack a wise joke may have been horrifically molested by his dad when he was a child. Do you think he would openly talk about that with other people? Probably not. Witty Susan, who is super brave and intelligent, may have aquaphobia, which is the fear of water, due to her nearly drowning on that cruise ship when she was six. I doubt she would talk about this with many people. She would be a laughing stock. Well, she might share it with the closest of her friend circle, in addition to her family. Maybe. Chances are you're not Susan's closest friend. She may like and get on with you, but she may not trust you enough with that information. It is nothing bad on your part, but it's a really personal issue for her, as is Larry's trauma. The same could be said between the relationship between them and the storyteller. They may not feel confident enough to pass on this information to them verbally, for they do not know how they will react. It is important information that the GM needs to know, as storytellers are all budding authors, really. It's, it's in the name. They all do their best to make you feel you are in the world or setting they have created, using big fancy words to add authenticity or add sound effects to add to this atmosphere. Ask yourself honestly, do you think Larry or Susan would fully enjoy themselves reliving these snippets of their lives? Chances are, the answer is no. With a bit of conversing between the players and GM, this sort of thing can be avoided and no one feels awkward, angry or upset about this blunder taking place. This is what these allegedly blasphemous consent sheets are for. They are protecting the player, not the character being roleplayed. No one likes having their character hurt, being stuck in dangerous positions or dying. Of course we don't. Sometimes we think it's funny because we have made a really bad dice roll or maybe you are playing a John Wick sort of character who just doesn't give a fuck. Bad things happen, especially in the world of darkness games. The concept of consent in Vampire the Masquerade is often embryonic at best and mythological at worst. These consent sheets are just another means of the player and storyteller conveying their thoughts and emotions about the game they're going to play and any other potential issues that arise. Some topics are uncomfortable to talk about, that is unfortunately the very nature of the shitty parts of life. I admit that these sheets aren't for everyone. I feel fairly confident that if something was going to bother me, that I could voice it in front of other players, as I did on my most recent game of Vampire the Masquerade. The storyteller told us the sort of game they wanted to play and laid down its themes and topics. There was a topic that one of the other players was morally unsure about and I too wanted to seek clarification, but I was not as concerned as the other player. Together, we all talked it through. We came to an understanding and made the changes to please everyone. Some new players and perhaps introverted individuals may prefer doing something like this with text. Even then, these sheets aren't perfect, as a potential trigger not included on the sheet may pop up at a dramatically inappropriate moment that would make things unpleasant for everyone. The point is, everyone should be having a good time with the game. The players and GM involved should be able to feel important both in and out of game, that their actions and thoughts mean something. And note that I am saying players, not characters, as we have all made a scumbag from time to time, am I right? It doesn't matter how you communicate your troubles and woes. Through a verbal conversation, a bit of written paper, heck, use Native American smoke signals if you really want to, we should all be able to talk about anything that bothers us. Who doesn't want to be and make others happy? To be kept updated, follow the Law by Night VTM Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we will upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.